Well, I'm here with Dr. Doug Goforth, the Executive Director of Student Life at Southern Evangelical Seminary, and also just a man after my own heart, if I can say that, in the area of discipleship. Uh, just a passionate uh, uh, appreciation I've noticed in, in you, Doug, for not only discipleship as an educational process, but the disciple-making process of passing on uh, to people who can then train other people as well. And so, Doug, if you would, a lot of folks probably are familiar with you, uh, maybe even from a distance, some of our students and things, but tell us a little bit about you and your journey and your family and your background. Um, okay, yeah. Thanks, uh, Dr. Cutchins. <laughs> Great to be here. Appreciate you having, having me here with you. Um, have a very uh, diverse uh, background. Um, been a businessman uh, most of my life. Uh, been, I run a software development company, which I still run. Been doing that for over 30 years. Um, been been married for over 30 years. I have two grown daughters. We have a new, they're both married. We have a new grandchild, uh, about four months old. So that's uh, monopolizing most of our time at this point. Um, I became a believer when I was a, a teenager and not raised in a Christian home. So um, when uh, some folks took me under their wing, uh, that uh, saw that a friend and I uh, should be discipled. We didn't know anything about discipleship, <laughs> you know. So these these guys from the Navigators noticed us taking these copious notes in church because we were all in uh, once the Lord brought us into His family, and um, that was the beginning of my understanding of the importance of discipleship because I needed discipleship in my life. And of course, the Great Commission says, "Go and make uh, disciples." <laughs> Um, and so over the over the years, I've used uh, my I would say my my successful I've used my successful uh, business to uh, fund my seminary habit. Um, and, uh, the reason I I wanted to go to seminary was just to I always just loved the scripture and wanted to understand the scripture and wanted to be able to communicate it and understand it and uh, like the scripture says about uh, Ezra to to learn the scriptures, to live it, and then to teach it. And that's uh, been my lifelong goal to do that, um, but to live it first. And for me, I felt like a seminary education was a great way to, to do that so that I could uh, first live it and then communicate it to others. So the Lord led me over the years to um, uh, come to SES and uh, get my uh, master's in biblical studies uh, which was very valuable to me and had great professors who, uh, you know, invested the joy of what they know um, to disseminate that to all of us who were who were students. And then had the opportunity to go on to a, a doctorate in educational ministry uh, later on that I finished a few years ago. And uh, that has turned out to be very valuable to me be, because not being a pastor, uh, I, I want to train other believers like myself, to understand and uh, live the gospel as, as well. So, you know, been a, a believer, uh, oh, I don't know, over over 50 years now, ongoing journey of discipleship. We never arrive. Uh, I teach small group, um, and some in my small groups are in their 80s and even in their 90s. And uh, they'll say as well, uh, no, they haven't arrived, and we're still learning and being discipled all the way until the Lord brings us to glory. The virtual faith link is really supported and heavily committed to online connectivity and building relationships and maintaining relationships and leveraging the technology to do that. How does the personal aspect of the virtual faith link design which you've seen and been able to look behind mm -hmm. the scenes of the design of this and, and how it's rolling out how does the the personal aspect and the personal connectivity uh, connect with you the fact that it's more than just virtual yeah which is it was great to meet in person uh, but it's great that we have this technology and i'm a tech guy myself so uh, i love that we can connect in in these ways but even though it's it's virtual, there's still a personal interaction here, which is which is very valuable to me. Any kind of leadership um, uh, 
uh, and Andrew Davis said the, that uh, Christian leadership is the God-given ability um, through the Holy Spirit to influence people by word and example to achieve God's purposes. And use it. so we're not just disseminating knowledge about the word, which we have to have knowledge about the word to grow spiritually, but it's word and example as well. And, and one of my favorite quotes is from Howard Hendricks that says, you cannot, um, uh, now, now it escapes me, of course, uh, <laughs> that uh, you can't impart what you don't possess. Howard Hendricks said, you can't impart what you don't possess. And so as leaders, of course, we have to possess that first. We have to have a personal discipleship. And that's what makes this personal interaction so important is that we're, we're imparting where the Lord has brought us and what he has done in our lives. Uh, it's not just a, a lecture, which lecture has its place, but this is, a, this is a different thing in discipleship. Yeah, more is caught than is taught is one of the phrases I remember when it comes to discipleship. And so the, the, the aspects of this that connect with the, the real life disciple making process and the multiplying piece really connects with both of our, our passions and our hearts and our callings and really the callings of anybody that follows Christ. That's what his commission was to go and make disciples specifically as a Christian educator now, uh, how does the training focus of this virtual faith link bring value to the discipleship process that sometimes can be heavily educational? Uh, how does the training aspect of this really connect with the value you see in it? Yeah, I, I love this approach, as, as we've said, in, in being part of a seminary. Uh, lecture is important and lecture uh, has its place. Uh, but uh, discipleship is a different kind of leadership. Um, in, in discipleship, we're coming alongside uh, folks. And uh, that's where the training really comes in rather than the, the lecture. Because we're, we're sharing our experience, we're sharing our life experience, we're sharing a journey with somebody. Uh, leadership in this style is not uh, going out front and then beckoning people to come along but instead is going back to where people are and going along the journey with them. And I see the training aspect really, really fits that for discipleship. Yeah, and both of us, we've had numerous conversations about this as it's being designed for the launch in 2025. The fascinating thing to me, and you, I'd love for you to speak to this as the Executive Director of Student Life, is that I'm finding that more of our alumni are, in, are interested in something like this that is post-seminary <laughs> that activates them, almost like a, a, a medical student that goes to medical school but then gets into a residency where they're very hands-on. Why do you think so many of our alumni are interested in getting involved with something like this that activates them in this way? Yeah, SES is a, is a great model for that. Um, as I interact with students, the majority of our students that come to SES uh, are professional working people just like myself. Um, I was uh, running a business, traveling all over, um, and um, of course I had a lay ministry to small groups. Um, and uh, so as I, as I see our students uh, engage, we do have professional uh, ministry folks. We have many of those at SES, but we also have a great number who were just like me. I want to know more about the scriptures. I want to communicate it better. I want to defend the faith, that apologia. I want to be able to do that um, through through knowledge and growth. So I see that uh, common among our student body, and I start to talk to a lot of students, and uh, they'll, they'll call um, wanting to find out more about SES and the differentiating factor is is really that the student body is made up that way. Um, not that you can't come to SES and be a pastor. We have we have many who do. Um, it's just the environment lends itself very well toward people from all walks of life um, who not only want to uh, enhance their own knowledge and interaction with others, but they probably have lay ministries like I did teaching small groups. I've been teaching small groups for 40 years. Uh, many folks are Sunday school teachers um, or involved in ministry in some way. Uh, in this day and age, 
uh, many times somebody who's appointed as a Sunday school teacher is really just a warm body who says, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> but our Sunday schools should be disciple makers. You know, we should be leading folks toward Christ likeness. Uh, to do that, not only do we have to engage in that ourselves as leaders, uh, but we have to know how to biblically communicate that information for the purpose of transformation, not just assimilating information, but uh, the Lord calls us to be transformed. And that's the purpose of conveying knowledge or uh, any kind of information. The purpose is to be transformed. Yeah, and you and I have, we've looked at the, the, the stats and the, the records of our graduates since the seminary has been in place and since 1992, we had a lot of people graduate, but the majority of them are folks that are marketplace vocational Christians that have no intention or specific calling to a full-time vocational ministry. Like I served as a full-time senior pastor, you know, or a full-time mm -hmm. worship leader or a full-time whatever in the local church. A lot of the folks, the majority of the folks that are graduating from Southern Evangelical Seminary, like you said, it's very unique. They're, they're marketplace Christians. They're, they're vocational Christian leaders and they want additional training. They also want an activation plan and a network and that's where the virtual faith link comes in. And I wanted to ask you, going back, taking you back, because obviously you're with us at SES now, but going back, you know, into your background as a um, a former, you know, CEO, um, a continuing successful businessman, a multi-million dollar business, what motivated you to pursue a specifically seminary training that focused on discipleship and disciple making? You know, my, my discipleship, as all of our discipleships, drives every aspect of our lives, whether it's being a businessman, um, a husband, a, a mother, a father, um, a friend. Discipleship uh, creeps into every part of our life. There's no compartmentalization in this. It, discipleship um, touches everything. Uh, as, as a businessman, there, there are lots of businessmen who may have... Um, high integrity and run their business as well. But what motivates them to that? So what motivates me as a, uh, as a high integrity businessman was working as to the Lord, part of my discipleship that everything in my life is to glorify God. And in fact, uh, making money is for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God, uh, not just buying uh, boats or homes or things like that. Uh, why does God make some people successful uh, so that they can participate in that way in the kingdom of God? And, and I think there's a, I, I generally see a lot of people that the Lord uh, blesses with successful businesses or whatever that, that they, they, if they're not cheerful givers to begin with, the Lord makes them cheerful givers. So the Lord has, has planned for all of that. So it's, it, but it's not just uh, business in understanding scriptures and living the scriptures that does help me as a businessman helps me as a father helps me as a friend uh, not just to be trained because i'm going to teach people in sunday school you know I, I don't go to i don't go to um get two seminary degrees just to be a sunday school teacher you know this uh this extends into all my relationships with my friends and my family whoever i meet uh as a businessman I would always, I, I traveled worldwide as a businessman and I would always be taken out to dinner by somebody in whatever host country I'm in. And somebody's always going to ask you, what do you like to do when you're not traveling or, uh, you know, doing whatever you're doing for business? And uh, my canned pat answer was that I like to study the Bible, which I do. That's my passion, reading and studying the Bible. And you can imagine what kind of conversations that opens with uh, people you don't know well in all different parts of the world. And uh, so uh, as, a, as a disciple who wants to defend the gospel, I have to be prepared for that in every situation. And then not only being prepared for it, but looking for opportunities to defend the gospel and uh, delighted and anxious to have those opportunities. Well, as people are considering investing, not only like you and I have, in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a life decision to be involved in the seminary, 
in a leadership role, but as people are considering investing financially in a seminary that's launching a nationwide certified discipleship strategy, it's a network of, of, of microgroup leaders, that are, a workforce, a, 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 an army of people, seminary that's outwardly focused that way with the virtual faith link specifically, you know, what's the value of investing in something like that? Oh, this is a great um, enhancement to what we're doing here at, at SES, especially because of, of the kind of student body that we have. Um, the uh, the in investment is uh, for what happens after seminary. So not necessarily before. Uh, when we think of uh, seminary, naturally what comes to mind is um, you know, PhD and very uh, smart people and biblically literate people, which is important. That's that's what should you should come out of seminary. But what's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to serve and advance the kingdom of God, to spread the gospel, to defend the faith. That's why we learn these things, not just to be, um, you know, scriptural eggheads, which which we love. I'm a Bible nerd, you know, just like you are. <laughs> you know, we we love that. Um, but our our purpose is to invest in others. So this is what we're doing in discipleship here is, uh, is pre-seminary, it's post-seminary, it touches all areas of our lives. And in fact, it gives us a great avenue for those who are graduates uh, because they're professional people. Sometimes they think, okay, well, now I've uh, gathered all this information and my life has been changed by having a seminary experience. Now what? Now what? Um, so, well, the, the now what is to go and invest in making disciples in whatever avenue the Lord makes available to you. And uh, Truth That Matters is such a great avenue for uh, touching that and uh, growing others in whatever ministry that they have. What obstacles do you see for Christian leaders today? Specifically, yes. yeah, the, the <laughs> obstacles that, that uh, uh, folks like us, Doug, that are focused on disciple making and want not only to see that in our own lives, but to see that in a uh, train the trainer type, passing it on, 2 Timothy 2, 2, you know, when Paul said to Timothy, man, what you've heard from me, pass it on. What are the obstacles that you have seen in, in the workforce? as a businessman and also in the Christian education realm and all this, the family aspects of what you have, what are the obstacles to leading and disciple making these days? Even among the Christian community, uh, there's such a, um, an influence of the culture um, that, uh, that tends to, to creep in. And we, we see a lot of uh, pop psychology and uh, just things that are not geared toward uh, uh, defending the, the historic faith as it was passed down uh, through the apostles, how it was given us in, to that in that way. And, uh, and those are things that happen in, in our church and in our culture that prevent us from thinking of discipleship in the way the apostles thought about it. Um, you know, in the, in the culture where we're, we're being drawn even as believers, to try to live with one foot in each kingdom, one foot in the kingdom of the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. And uh, that's not the way God wants us to live. Uh, if we're to experience what he calls abundant life, uh, to be able to have joy and assurance among all the chaos that is going on around us, um, we have to be fully committed to uh, discipleship and to the word of God, while at the same time, uh, not uh, just partitioning ourselves off from people that we can influence their lives. Uh, and in, in church, there's another, there's another issue that goes on in our church culture um, because we, we don't see uh, a lot of churches committed to the discipleship model these days. Um, there's, there's a really uh, cool book title by a guy named John Wilhoyt called Spiritual Formation as if the church mattered. <laughs> So the, the church, the church does matter, and I, I really enjoyed uh, reading that that work. So we we come to to church and we get involved, uh, in which we should get involved and we should serve. But uh, the purpose of our coming together 
Um, of course, our primary purpose is to worship God and recognize who he is and give him all the glory. But we come together because we're partners in the gospel. We have a partnership in the gospel. Um, and that's what Paul calls us. That's that coin in the air. It's a partnership that we have. Uh, and that uh, partnership is to help each other grow in discipleship. We see that in, in the early church going on. And so just getting back to some of the barriers that are in the church culture is, um, is a, a lack of commitment to discipleship and transformation and becoming Christ-like which is what we're all drawn to be. And, and the Christ life, the pursuit of a Christ-like life is the most uh, rewarding life there is. Not that it's not without suffering and its problems and its troubles, just like anything is, but that's what God calls us to in our spiritual formation. Um, that's where he's calling us to is discipleship. And the church should have that at the forefront. And many churches do, but not enough. Yeah, and the research shows that these days. There is a real state of emergency when it comes to the biblical Great Commission of making disciples. Uh, so is there anything else you want to share? I appreciate you giving some time today. Is there any other things that you'd like to say to folks that are uh, interested in the Virtual Faith Link and, and potentially sponsoring it? Yeah, I, again, I think this is a great way to invest uh, because it's part of a seminary. Um, and, and what I love about the connection with the seminary that I think makes it a great reason for giving is because of what's behind um, what's behind the discipleship model here. Uh, there's a um, there's a there's a credential and there's an assurance that uh, there's a uh, a biblical commitment to uh, all the things that we stand for at SES to uh, inerrancy to um, uh, defending the historic faith. Well, you know, if you're going to defend the historic faith, you probably should know what the historic faith is. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a very important thing for us here at SES. What is the historic faith? Um, there's a lot of uh, making it up as you go along these days and, and things that we just feel are right. Uh, when you have something like uh, a, a solid seminary like SES behind uh, uh, an initiative, like this, uh, you've really got the the pedigree that assures that it's going to be biblically based uh, in all the right ways uh, and in all the right uh, fashions, uh, as as intended by um, those who founded SES, Norm Geisler and uh, uh, Dr. Rhodes. Um, uh, they were just uh, both of them committed to uh, discipleship, but committed to seminary education as well. Uh, there, there's no better foundation than a solid education to launch something like this. So good. Well, Doug, I really appreciate your time and your heart for not only discipleship as a concept and an educational process, we're both invested in that, but also the relational training aspect of multiplying leaders through uh, being a leader, a leader in, in discipleship. So thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this. Thank you. Delighted to be with you today, Stephen.